Section 18. Resignation from the Survey But even up to this time all had not been clear sailing in Washington. Already, in 1884, opposition to the rapid growth of the survey, instigated, it is said, by some of those who were left out of the government service in the reorganization of 1879, had arisen in Congress. The Joint Commission, above referred to, was its outcome. Powell's testimony disclosed, however, so perfect an organization, he showed himself so completely in control of it, and his statement traversing certain averments made by members of the opposing minority in Congress was so satisfying to his friends in the majority that he came out victorious from the ordeal. The appropriation of nearly half a million for the survey for the year ending June 30, 1885, was, in the face of the organized opposition, raised to little over half a million for 1885-1886, and so continued for the next two years. It was raised to $605,000 for 1888-1889, reduced to $551,000 for 1889-1890, and reached the maximum of $719,000 for 1890-1891. The decrease of nearly $90,000 for the following year marked the opening of a period of adversity which culminated in the summer of 1892. The establishment of the Irrigation Survey four years before had aroused the opposition of large landowners and cattle kings in the West, a result that was not unexpectable when the scientific administration of a public bureau in the interest of the country as a whole clashed with the personal interest of men who were rapidly growing rich under the unrestricted use of public resources. And unhappily, at about the same time, Powell's wounded arm gave him much pain. The suffering thus caused made it difficult for him to labor with congressional committees as successfully as he had before. The first successful stroke of the opposition was made in 1891, not only by the reduction of the appropriation for the year ending June 30th, 1892, as noted above, but further by the assignment of definite sums for the salaries of designated members of the survey and for special branches of work. Work on irrigation was not mentioned, and was therefore suspended. The following year was nothing less than disastrous. The appropriation for the year ending June 30, 1893, voted at the late date of August 5, 1892, fell to $430,000. Definite sums were assigned to work and salaries as before, but now 14 stated salaries were discontinued, and at the same time, the amount of money assigned to topographic surveys was so large a part of the total that the balance left for geology was scanty. Field work was in active progress by a number of divisions of the geological branch when this blow fell. It was stopped by telegraphic orders, and the workers were directed to prepare records already in hand for publication or at least to put their material into systematic shape, so that it might be used later. Many salaries that were not cut off entirely were seriously reduced. Some members of the survey voluntarily worked through the following winter on small pay or no pay. It was a time of distress. The next year the appropriation was raised to nearly $500,000, but the volume in which this is announced opens with a page from Powell to his collaborators, taking leave of them. His resignation, to take effect June 30, 1894, had been announced some months before. The burden of his work had grown, and its difficulties had been aggravated by antagonism. His poor health did not allow him to suffer the irritation of conflicts, 
his withdrawal from the survey was made necessary by painful disability and he devoted himself thenceforward to the simpler duties of the bureau of ethnology of which he continued to be the chief powell's administration of the survey was extraordinary in many respects he was a strong independent an aggressive leader, as was to be expected in view of his freely expressed indifference to traditions and conventionalities. He was truly a director by nature, and so confident of his power that he never hesitated to appoint able men as his subordinates. His authority was maintained without resort to the formalities of rank. Indeed, he replaced with a jovial comradeship the lofty inaccessibility not unknown in some official bureaus, American as well as European. He had a keen sense of justice. I well remember the outburst of indignation with which he replied at a scientific meeting to a speaker who had referred unfairly to the work of an absent colleague. He felt a warm personal interest in the work of his associates, more than one junior has felt the cheer of his sympathetic appreciation. He attached the members of the survey to its service and secured their devoted and loyal support because he was helpful, trustful, and encouraging to them when he was convinced that he had good grounds for being so. He felt a personal solicitude for the future of the workers in the survey that outlasted his directorship. Withdrawal from office, under a sense of disappointment, was a sad ending to the vast work of creation and organization that Powell had guided almost from its beginning. But he had at least, in the decade that followed, the satisfaction of seeing the return of the survey to a period of growth and prosperity under the direction of his successor who had long been associated with him, and to whom at the end of a difficult piece of work ten years earlier he had said, the older man, putting his one arm around the younger, My boy, you have done well. I hope you will stay with us. End of section 18